this is uh, one of those interesting situations that seems to fit into my wheelhouse because, as you know, I I study the the occult philosophies and religions and try to find how the philosophies and symbolism and ideas show up in our pop culture. And this King Charles the Third painting came out, and everyone's talking about it. There's there's some strange symbolism we can talk about. We can talk about the artist who is uh, known for putting symbolism in his artwork. And this is this just runs parallel to everything I've I've been into since I you know started blogging, writing books, and podcasting so many years ago. So I'm uh, I'm thrilled to be back on your show to talk about it. So thank you. Well, I I knew this would be right in your wheelhouse. In fact, um, my new executive producer here at Strange Planet is the mighty Aphrodite, and uh, she said when that when that portrait was unveiled and and um, you know people were uh, showing that if you take I think four if you copied that uh, portrait four times and and kind of flip things around and lined them up, you see Baphomet, the goat-headed um, a god. Uh, she said, oh my God, you have to get Isaac Weiss hopped on the program. So we made it happen and uh, thank you for being here. So let's, yeah, let's talk about the, the official portrait, the first official portrait of King Charles, again, uh, unveiled officially at Buckingham Palace on May the 14th. Um, and if you're, if you're just listening to the podcast, uh, the audio version, you might want to consider at some point, um, checking out the rumble, uh, version with video, because we're going to be posting some, uh, inserting some images there. Uh, if you're just listening on audio, we'll try and draw some mental images, but I, I'm sure many of you have already seen the official portrait. So just explain, uh, just give us a kind of a, an overview of, of what we see when we see the, 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 the portrait itself before we get into some of the hidden images. The, the portrait itself, people will notice immediately. It's, you know, obviously King Charles III, and the background is just sort of bathed in red, and there's a monarch butterfly. And a lot of these are typical symbols that we talk about with all of the, you know, theories about the Illuminati and how they operate And this. I mean, just to give a sort of very brief primer on why any of this matters or, or, or how this even works. Symbolism is a tool that speaks to the subconscious of the viewer. And this goes back to psychoanalysts like Carl Jung, uh, Sigmund Freud and his nephew, Edward Bernays, who was the, the king of propaganda. He was the guy who, you know, uh, corporate America hired on to convince people that diamond engagement rings should be a, a thing because before that they didn't use diamonds for engagement rings. He's the one who convinced us that we needed to have bacon and eggs for breakfast. He's the one who got women to start smoking. Uh, they called them torches of freedom. And there's all this sort of propaganda that Edward Bernays utilized. And uh, that's kind of the most sort of, I don't know if rational is the right term, but it's the most rational real world example of how symbolism really does affect us. And, the, the elites, the thought leaders, the people behind this quote-unquote Illuminati, they understand that all these things are very powerful, and this is uh, important to their agenda. And then, you know, you could do separate shows arguing what is the agenda, and that's kind of the million-dollar question. But for now, we can focus on the symbolism of this King Charles III painting. And when you, when you tear it apart and try to look at it with an open mind, you've got this symbolism of blood you've got potential symbolism of magic uh twin peaks project monarch mind control operations all kinds of stuff is actually in here if you uh take a look at it from that angle and um uh, it's interesting to me because this is back because i'm you know i'm american i know very little about the royal family's history and all this but this took me took me back to my first book i wrote back in 2012 and one of the major topics in that book was the uh the murder of princess diana uh with the idea being that if that happened that just goes to show that we as the public you know what they call the uh the uh the profane were part of some kind of ritual that we can't be let behind the scenes so that's why a lot of people like me we overanalyze and and take a look at stuff like this with a very critical lens uh so and another piece of supporting evidence as to why we should even consider these theories is because the artist himself who painted it, Jonathan Yao, uh, he was known for doing portraits of political leaders like George Bush uh, or Sarah Palin. And he 
Tony he Blair. Made their, Tony Blair, yeah. He he made their portraits, and several of them, like George Bush, he had cut up images from um uh adult content magazines, right? And that was a a a play on he, he was saying that there was a, a moral superiority to the extreme right wing of American politics. So he used uh, conservative politicians like Bush and Sarah Palin and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger even uh, and sort of put these adult uh, images on there. And he had done several portraits, uh, including Tony Blair, which was controversial because he depicted Blair wearing a poppy, which is supposed to be a symbol for rem for the remembrance of how, you know, terrible war is implying that tony blair was a warmonger because this was back in you know uh when george bush after 9 11 and got into the middle east and all that stuff right weapons and, of mass destruction which didn't exist and so right <laughs> right it's uh it's like we just keep we keep reliving these similar patterns so he has and, kind of a sardonic jonathan yell the artist has kind of a sardonic sense of humor and 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 uses hidden images sometimes to take the mickey out of his subjects so again you know the 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 what he sees as the moral uh rectitude moral superiority of some on the conservative christian right let's say he'll sort of hide images that kind of be kind of you know belies that that it shows the hypocrisy maybe yes and his father was a a, a conservative british politician which oftentimes you'll see this this kind of I don't know, 180 degrees opposing polarity come through with a parent who's a conservative and the child is is a liberal like uh, Jim Morrison from The Doors, right? His father was a, a Navy admiral, mm -hmm. part of the infamous Gulf of Tonkin false flag. And then Jim Morrison, obviously very much like a leftist hippie kind of guy. Uh, but, but the point is that this guy 100% puts symbolism and messages into his paintings, which, you know, begs the question why people still would go to this guy when he kind of does this stuff, <laughs> but uh, that's neither here nor there, but uh, he does for sure have symbolism in his painting. So we have to take a look at the symbolism and the one that stands out when you look at this painting is this monarch butterfly that's, that appears in the, in the uh, painting. And officially, if you look at the facts of how this thing was put together or, you know, the facts of what they presented to the public, the, the, the idea actually came from King Charles himself. And uh, if you go to the artist, uh, Jonathan Yow's website, he says that the butterfly approaching King Charles's shoulder in the portrait adds a layer of narrative depth, symbolizing both his known advocacy for environmental causes and his personal transformation. Man, uh, the monarch Metamorphosis, right? A, a butterfly represents metamorphosis, change. Right. Yeah. And, and I do think that uh, in fact, he even says that he says the butterfly is the symbol of metamorphosis and rebirth, and it parallels the king's transition from prince to monarch during uh, the period because he started painting it while he was Prince Charles, right? Yeah. And the the BBC elaborated on this a little bit more, and what happened was apparently Jonathan Yao was talking to the king, and he asked him when school children are looking at this in two hundred years. And they're looking at the who's who of the monarchs. What clues can you give them? And Charles's response was, what about a butterfly landing on my shoulder? So all all sort of surface level arguments for this symbol are it's just a symbol for metamorphosis and rebirth like the monarch butterfly. But another idea, if you want to put on the more conspiratorial lens, is the idea of MK Ultra mind control programming. Project and Martin. yeah. And Project Mart, you know, and and MK Ultra had, uh, we we obviously don't know everything that happened with MK Ultra. We know it ran for about twenty years until they got caught. The the F, you know the FBI was running this or the CIA, excuse me, and uh, I believe it was Ed Helms was the guy running it. And once it got sort of leaked th that the the CIA was conducting experiments unknowingly on its own citizens, they started. Uh, burning and getting rid of all the documents and then eventually they sort of uh, took it to the um, to be exposed in a court of law and what we do know is that there were multiple sub programs investigating various things uh, including the paranormal 
Uh, but one of those supposed projects is a Project Monarch program. And this comes by way of Kathy O'Brien. She wrote about this in her book, Transformation of America. And in the book, she talks about how Project Monarch was a trauma-based mind control where she lost control over her own free will and thoughts. And she says right in the book, I'm going to read two sentences here. Uh, she says, those who controlled my mind and ultimately my actions claimed to be aliens, demons, and gods. But it was my experience that these perpetrators of the New World Order controls were and are bound by bound by fully human confines despite their terror tactic claims and illusion. The true laws of nature and the laws of man indeed do apply to them. Project Monarch, which is what she said she was uh, subjected to, Project Monarch was a mind control operation which was recruiting multi-generational incest abuse children with multiple personality disorder for its genetic mind control studies. I was a prime candidate, a chosen one. And you see symbolism of this in, like, uh, for instance, I'm doing a presentation in Las Vegas, quick plug for that, June 22nd yes. in Las Vegas, uh, about Stanley Kubrick and his final film, Eyes Wide Shut. And when you look at Stanley Kubrick's films, like The Shining, you know, in The Shining, on the surface level, when people watch it, they think, well, it's about this guy played by Jack Nicholson who is physically abusive towards his son, Danny. But if you look at it on this sort of subconscious level or hidden level, I should say, what they're really showing us is possible multi-generational incest abuse children, which is Danny in this case. Because, for instance, when Jack is at the Overlook in the lobby, he's reading a Playgirl magazine. And, and Stanley Kubrick was an obsessive guy. This guy didn't put mistakenly put things in his film. Uh, he he was known. He was notorious for the stuff like when he filmed Eyes Wide Shut. He had he filmed it in London because he left America in the 60s, and never came back. Uh, he filmed it in London, but he flew personnel to America, to the streets of New York to measure the newspaper stands on the sidewalks because he wanted to recreate the set. I mean, the guy was like obsessed with this stuff. So to see a Playgirl magazine, which uh, for people who don't know, that's it's a magazine that had nude men in it. Uh, Jack Nicholson's reading this casually in the Overlook. And when you zoom in on it, you find that there's an article on the front cover about incest abused children. And then when you look at some of the other symbolism of The Shining with with the teddy bear, with the uh, Danny who's got this dissociative identity disorder problem. He he speaks to Tony, this alter ego of his. Uh, you could argue, and then on top of all that, when Danny's in the day room in this one scene, if you look at the back wall, there's a poster and it says Monarch on it. Now, you know, this movie was filmed a long time ago. This is before Kathy O'Brien wrote the book. This was before MK Ultra was known to the public. Well, though, so a little bit of it came out during the, was it the church committee in the uh, in the committee hearings in the, what was that, 76, 1976 or something? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. maybe there was some overlap. You might be right. Yeah. So so I, I don't know whether Kubrick knew about it or not, but he, he zoomed in on this. And uh, the argument here, I would say, is that Danny is quite possible uh, – an, ex an explanation for how this works and um and this all goes back to the nazi scientists but you know it, after world war ii an operation paperclip we brought a bunch of nazi scientists over and they were doing all kinds of experimentation over there that was in this sort of ballpark uh the Liebensborn eugenics programs and this is where okay so so let me zoom back out because i don't want to go too far deep down that rabbit hole but the idea we're presenting is that Perhaps King Charles III's butterfly, this monarch butterfly, doesn't mean metamorphosis and rebirth. Maybe it's showing participation of on some level of this this MK Ultra Project Monarch, and the, what ties us into that is the royal family's connections to the Nazis, who were doing stuff just like this. We bring them over to America in Operation Paperclip, and then what do you know? The CIA is doing very similar kinds of studies. Right. You have uh, Prince Philip, uh, who was um, closely associated with Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, who was uh, a, a member of the SS. Um, and uh, I believe, um, now let me see, who was it? Was it Prince Philip's sisters that married into the Hess family? Um 
so yeah, and and, and we 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 all know about you know um, Prince David who became uh, King Edward the Eighth who abdicated and and he was courting Adolf Hitler. Uh, so there is a connection there for for sure. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I'm not uh, super well versed on the history of the royals, but the um, you know. Fun fact, I almost got into a fight with a relative of Rudolf Hess. There was a guy in the military I was with, and we were really close friends, and we got into a lot of heated arguments. And uh, anyways, he, he was related to Rudolf Hess. But uh, um, Prince Philip, he uh, his his sister married uh, a prominent Nazi, and that's where there's footage of Prince Philip walking or, you know, doing the, uh, what do you call it? The, I don't know if goose stepping is the right term, but in the Nazi uniform because he was attending – um, one of his sister's funerals. And then just recently, a few years ago, Queen Elizabeth, she somehow was caught on film back in the in the 30s um, doing a Nazi salute. And she had to apologize for that before she passed away. And then Prince Harry went supposedly went to a birthday party wearing uh, like a, a brown shirt uniform with the, yeah. the logo on the on the sleeve. And I'm just like, I mean, who goes to a birthday party dressed up? I, you know, because I thought it was a Halloween party when when I started researching because I remembered it. Uh, but anyways, there's there's this sort of rich history of connection there, and so you know, the question is, is Project Monarch a real thing? I mean, according to Kathy O'Brien, it is, and with given that there was you know documented dozens and dozens of sub programs in the MK Ultra uh, experiments. The I'd have to side with the idea that yes, I think Project Monarch was real on some levels. And and of all the symbols to demonstrate your interest in the environment, um, I suppose you could pick a monarch butterfly, but you could also pick I don't know a um, a, a deer, a baby deer, a fawn. You could pick a tree. You could pick uh, I don't know about a million things to represent you know nature and the environment. Uh, but he picked a monarch, not just any butterfly. I mean, you could pick a, you know, about a, a, a thousand probably different butterflies. He chose a monarch. Uh, 